From um, 1617, there will no longer be a separate community learning budget. All providers can offer non-accredited learning um, if providers and local commissioners, what I mean by local commissioners is, is that they will be the ones that we would have to sell our services to to actually give us the funding in the first place. Whereas at the moment we get a, like a grant that gives us the money and then we can make a decision on how we deliver that. This, will, this completely turns the model around on its head. And um, obviously whether such activity is both relevant and effective. Okay? Because I'm sure you're aware that we have two streams at the moment. We have adult skills budget, which is our accredited learning, and we have community-based learning, which is our non-accredited learning. Okay? Now, obviously though, locally designed provision must be high quality. Now looking at, um, there's a new report from what is known as like a college group, and looking at where we place ourselves, we are more around the entry level based re-engagement of learners to who may have had bad experiences in education. And looking at where the, the, the mayor's role seems to be, reading from what I see, and it's a new, the mayor will have more of a, a London wide overview of level three to five. There will be local sub regional groups that we would obviously have to commission and bid into to, for our funding which is where a lot of our learning is at entry level up to level two, GCSE. We do have a small level three program, which is our level three um, childcare, and we can obviously look at how our curriculum fits in then with that overall progression. Um, however then, the SFA are planning to retain then for that, to maintain the high quality, the use of RAPA. Everybody's aware of RAPA, we've been using RAPA for many years. I think it sort of came in for in about 15 years. There have been many debates around, around it. However, it's still the recognised gold standard um, in recording progress and achievement. Now, therefore, within non-accredited, especially if we're making a case to the Commissioner around our funding, the OLP will become the centrepiece then for demonstrating value and impact. And that courses then are worth funding and obviously meet local need. I think John alluded to the fact earlier it's not about individuals, it's about community-based need. And that's how we've got to identify as a service what the community does need and then we need to provide that and make our case, again, to ensure that they will fund it and continue to fund it. And therefore, the ILP will be extremely important in demonstrating this impact and progression through both stepping stone routes, non-accredited, re-engagement of learning, and obviously qualifications as well, and that's towards then full level two and three qualifications, including our GCSEs. Okay? So, what do we do now? Now all learners have either a short or long course ILP for every course they undertake. Um, there are, then there are a series of indicators that measure, our prog well, measure the learner's progress towards the learning goals, and ultimately the core skills. And these include, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with, Improve your skills of understanding of this subject. Create a product or project. Progress at or into work. Support your children or grandchildren. In some debate whether that needs to be reviewed at some stage, but um, make or maintain relationships. Progress to further training. Improve your health or well-being, and improve a core skill. Now, what the key for our services is is that but to re-engage learners in learning is not all about qualifications. And that's what we need to try to get across, again, to the commissioners, that what we are funding is of value, both from a qualitative and a quantitative perspective, but supports all these key indicators. And that enables learners to often, as I say, to progress into either work, secure employment, and then it's measured through our destinations and progression data that John has mentioned earlier. Okay? And, therefore, we have our own community learning strategy, which is a two- to three-year plan. Obviously, as we know, from 2018, the Skills Funding Agency disappears. And from there, um, that will obviously impact clearly on our uh, uh, direction and direction within the Council um, on increasing our impact on learners' lives. Okay, so what next? During the second part of the session, then, we, as a group, will explore themes around how do we as practitioners currently use the ILP? 
How do learners currently engage in using the ILP? How effective is it in measuring impact both during and at the end of the course? What can be done to improve learning engagement and use the ILP more effectively? And how can we show to our future funders that these courses are worth funding? And clearly for me as well, are we missing anything? Is there anything from your perspective that you think we are actually missing? 